So welcome to video problem 10 and uh, here we are examining Laplace equation in uh, spherical coordinates in particular from the known electric potential difference we are going to use this equation to derive electric potential fields and charge for a spherical capacitor. Note that this is an approach which is uh, opposite to the one we took in video problem 7. So here is uh, the configuration of our spherical capacitor. We have an inner conductor of radius A and an outer conductor uh, of uh, radius B. The inner conductor is kept at a constant potential V0 while the outer conductor is grounded and thus has a potential equal to zero. The medium between the two conductors is a simple and source-free dielectric material with permittivity epsilon you can see here, so that we have this very simple uh, relationship between the D and E fields in the capacitor. Obviously there is a spherical symmetry in the problem and you can also refer to video problem 1 and video problem 7 for uh, details on the implications of spherical symmetry. Here I can just tell you that this will imply that the charge will be uniformly distributed on the surface of inner and outer conductors as you can see on the figure here and uh, this would also mean that uh, when we introduce uh, the electric field that it will have uh, this particular uh, outward uh, radial direction and the same will of course hold true for the D field. If you introduce uh, this uh, rectangular XYZ uh, coordinate system with the associated uh, R, theta and phi coordinate systems. Uh, the spherical symmetry implies that our electric uh, field and the electric flux density they will be radial and their magnitudes will only depend on the radial coordinate and also that the potential will only depend on the distance uh, from the origin to the observation point in the dielectric. So that means that in this case what we are actually doing is that we have assumed uh, a potential difference between our conductors. We will use an appropriate equation to get the potential at any point inside of the conductors. This will then uh, lead to the electric field which immediately gives uh, the flux density in the dielectric and the knowledge of flux density uh, when using the boundary condition will immediately give us the induced free surface charge density uh, on inner and outer conductors. These can be integrated to get the total charge in Coulomb which can be used in this standard general equation to get the capacitance of our spherical capacitor. So here you can see the configuration again and because our dielectric is uh, devoid of any charges, there are no sources in the dielectric material, the appropriate equation for the potential is of course Laplace equation. And now uh, we are dealing with a spherical geometry, so we are uh, actually bound to use the Laplacian in spherical coordinates and uh, this is the uh, explicit expression uh, for Laplace equation in spherical coordinates. But of course there are some terms here which will uh, be equal to zero. Our potential doesn't vary with, uh, with theta, so this term here is zero. And it doesn't vary with phi either, so this term also is going to be equal to zero. So for this particular configuration, the potential will satisfy uh, the expression here, which is basically the first term of our uh, Laplacian that you can see here. So from this one, uh, if you multiply with r squared, you arrive at the result here. So this is the one which is at the outset for our determination of the potential in the dielectric. Again, note that the potential here is hidden under two uh, derivative uh, operators. So you will have to integrate this equation uh, two times with respect to r to actually, uh, to actually determine uh, the potential. So this is the first integration on both sides. So what we have on the left hand side is the term here and on the right hand side we get an arbitrary integration constant C1. Then we can move uh, R2 from left to right so that we have uh, the term here 
and again perform an integration on both sides with respect to r. On the left we will have our potential and on the right uh, this will be the result of this second integration so we can uh, see that we get another uh, integration constant. So we have uh, now our potential at any distance uh, in the dielectric and this involves uh, two unknown integration constants. These two constants will be determined uh, by using boundary conditions. Our potential will have to recover uh, uh, this specified uh, B0 constant at the surface of inner conductor, which is for R equal to A. And when this R here, which is this R here, equals B, our potential will have to equal zero because the outer conductor is grounded. These two boundary conditions will give you two equations in two unknowns, uh, which you can easily solve for the unknown constants, C1 and C2. And then you can plug them back in this expression for the potential to arrive at the final result for the potential as a function of R coordinate in our spherical capacitor. So this is the potential at any distance in the dielectric medium between the two conductors of our spherical capacitor. When we know the potential, uh, take the negative gradient of this potential, which in this case reduces to the expression here, to arrive easily at the expression for the electric field inside uh, of our spherical capacitor. Of course, this is a radially directed uh, field, and there is this one over the distance square dependence uh, in the field uh, in the field inside the dielectric because this is a simple material using this uh, expression here will give us uh, the electric flux density or the d field inside of our dielectric material now that we know the d field and this is the d field uh, at any distance uh, in the dielectric material as you can see here we can uh, we can use uh, the boundary conditions uh, for the normal component of the D-field to, uh, to get the amount of charge which is induced on the surface of inner and surface of outer conductors. And this is the general boundary condition. It essentially says that the normal component of the D-field across a boundary uh, is equal to free surface charge density residing on that boundary. So this is the D field in medium 1 evaluated at the boundary. This is the D field at medium 2 evaluated at the boundary. This is the normal unit vector pointing from medium 2 to medium 1. So when we dot this unit vector with this D1, we are having a normal component of this field at the boundary. And when we dot it with the second field, we are having a normal component of that field evaluated at the boundary. So to use this expression, uh, to use this boundary condition, I introduce uh, the following designation uh, of uh, media. So let the dielectric be medium 1 and let the conductor be medium 2. So our normal unit vector which points from medium 2 to medium 1 is obviously our R uh, hat unit vector which is in the radial outward direction and uh, we also note that our D field over here is already normal uh, to the boundary because this is in the uh, radial direction so the D field inside of the of the conductor here which is our field D2 this is zero so we'll have to dot this R unit vector with our D field, which is already in the R direction, and evaluate this field, D1, for R equal to A, because this is uh, corresponding to the boundary where we have the surface of our inner conductor. So by plugging everything in the boundary condition, it is straightforward to arrive at this expression for the surface, uh, for the free surface charge density on the inner conductor. Please note that this is just the normal component of this D field evaluated at the surface of the inner conductor where R is equal to A, which is why you see A over here. And also note that in this case, this field here was already normal to this particular boundary. When we know the induced surface charge density and when we also know 
that this surface charge density is uniformly distributed over the surface of the inner conductor, we can just multiply it with its surface area to get the total charge in Coulomb which is induced on that surface. The surface area of the inner conductor, which has a radius a, is 4 pi a squared, and when we multiply it with the expression uh, for the charge density, we get the amount in Coulomb which is induced on the inner surface. The knowledge of this total charge on the inner conductor uh, will uh, very easily provide the capacitance. Just take this total charge and divide it with the assumed potential difference or the voltage between the inner and outer conductors and we will arrive at our usual expression for the capacitance of a spherical capacitor. Now in this case um, we have derived the result by first assuming the potential difference between the two conductors and in video problem 7 we have uh, done the calculation uh, of our capacitance by first assuming the charge uh, on the two conductors. So this is a quite opposite approach that we have demonstrated in this video problem. So we are now uh, done with all of our tasks and we have a few tasks for you as well. Uh, first of all, compare uh, very carefully the solution of this problem to the one outlined in uh, video problem 7. Uh, moreover, determine the surface charge density which is induced on the outer conductor and as a hint you might uh, wish to refer to video problem 9. And also uh, determine the total charge in Coulomb which is induced on the outer conductor. Thank you very much for your attention.